Hey everyone, uh, I finally got some time to actually do a bit of programming and I finally did implement those card effects and that was why I started this project in the first place because games like Hearthstone, Legends of Runeterra, like they have so many cards and I was wondering I guess how those card effects are implemented at the end of the day. So if we look at Unity right now, um, if I were to I guess drag the unit card up, you could see that this increments to play the unit card effect, right? And the next thing I'd like to do is if I were to play uh, obviously at this point like there's nothing actually implemented it's just a debug statement or a log statement and the next thing we're going to do is drag up the card or the spell card and if I drop it you're gonna see oh actually you don't see that increments let me just remove myself perfect uh, so if I drag up the spell card once more you could see that this line increments play the spell card effect it goes up do it again it's gonna be five drag up the unit instead it's going to increment to three so i finally did manage to get that all set up and i'll show you i guess my confusion before i started this project and why i wanted to take a look into this so we're back in visual studio and we're looking at the player card usage system on the top that's what the script we're looking at and we're looking at the play card script that we wrote last time which is activated whenever a card leaves our player's hand and what i was getting at was essentially that when we play a card we need to determine what type of card it is and that doesn't seem very feasible when we have like in our case we only have two cards but in the grand scheme of things in a larger card game they have like what, thousands hundreds of cards right and you're not going to have a different like little switch statement or an if statement for every single card that is different right so if we look here uh we have to determine what card is being played and then we have to call the correct function right so right here i've this is just an example it's not really the code that we have done but selected card dot get component and then like let's say we we were to pick our spell card right and we play our spell card then we have to run the code that is associated to our spell card to get the right effect and this is where the problem lies it's where test spell card is its own script and then the unit card is also its own script right so the problem would be if we have a thousand different cards, we're not going to have a thousand different lines of code that have like different statements to just run the right associated code, right? And to solve this, what I did was, if I scroll down a bit, this is actually what I finally ended up doing. It's I have a card effect parent, which is a class that has an abstract method. I think I'll put a little diagram up here right now. And what it is, is that both of these two both of the spell card as well as the unit card just inherit from this parent object and because the method is abstract what's going to happen is that it's going to rely on the method that is then actually implemented in the two scripts spe specific to the cards that are played uh, well, there is one glaring problem where i couldn't actually add a script to the card object the scriptable object which is our template that we use to generate the cards and i'll cover that in a bit but what i ended up doing was adding it to a prefab and then calling the script attached to the prefab and then we just call the card effect parent because that's the method that is inherited from and then on play and what happens here is that because it's expecting a card a type of card effect parent which is inherited by both the the test spell card and the test unit card then it's just going to play the correct on play method which is associated to each card so we're going to walk through how I actually started implementing this so this is just a very basic summary of what this video is about so we'll be actually creating these scripts step by step just so I guess you can follow along and create them so I'm going to have a specific folder for where I store these. You can just store these wherever you'd like. Just remember where you put them. So we're going to be creating three different scripts, one for our parent, um, one for our spell card, and one for our unit card. So we can just right click. Oh, it doesn't show up. Okay, well, just right click, create a uh, new C Sharp script. It's going to show up here. Just call this one, I guess, test uh, card effect parent. Uh, you can take the test out for yours. It's just, I have the same documents, so I'm just going to call each and every one of them test. Once we create the test card effect parent, we're going to make two more scripts. The first one being the test uh, spell card effect. 
and the next one being the test for the unit card. So test unit card effect. So once we've had these two created, all we have to do is just open them up. So I'm gonna double click all of them and I'll switch over to Visual Studio. All right, and we're in Visual Studio. Let's pull up the three that we just created and I'm gonna zoom out just a bit. So there's gonna be test unit card effect, test spell card effect and test card effect parent. And for this one, we're going to leave it as a model behavior just because we will have to add it to a game object. And I guess it's the only part where I really couldn't figure out, but I'll, I'll get into that after we're done implementing this. So what we need to do is we need to implement an abstract method. So public abstract, uh, and we're going to call this, I think on play it was on play. Um, it's also void because it doesn't do anything. And aside from that, I believe we do have to make the class abstract as well. So right here, abstract public class, save that. And this is still giving us problems, test card. Oh, right. So you can't, <laughs> my bad. You can't actually implement anything here. So all you have to do is just close it off here. And this is the, I guess the ideal, the parent that we're going to this is the parent that we will be inheriting from. And now that that's done, let's head over to our test spell card effect. And from here, you can see that it inherits from mono behavior. We're not gonna be doing this inheritance for the test spell card effect and the test unit card effect. We're just going to be inheriting from the test card effect parent. And we have to, you can see here that it's red and it's telling me that I need to implement the abstract method that we created. And that was called on play. So let's implement it now. Uh, public override. Uh, we're gonna need to override it. Public override on play, was it? And for here, this is where you'd probably write the functionality. So if this spell card was to draw two cards, then we'd probably get a reference to our deck, maybe like find game object by tag, find the deck one, and then draw two cards and then place it in our player's hand. And we're not gonna go through with that because every game's different and I don't wanna confuse you. So uh, I'm just gonna have a debug me method here, or debug line here. Um, we are playing the test spell card effect. And so this is, going to be your actual implementation of the card effect. I, I know that maybe you're disappointed that we aren't actually talking about that, but do keep in mind that this is just different for whatever game you're making. And this is like a general overview of how you may want to do things. And aside from the, now that we've finished the spell card effect, we also have to do the other one, which is the unit card. So what we're going to do is same thing is we're going to inherit from our parent. And then it's gonna yell at us just because we need to implement our abstract method. Play override on play. And then what we're going to do is, I mean, having this sort of statement probably isn't bad either, just in case anything goes wrong, but debug.log. And what we're going to do is write down the same as this one and then just replace the debug with the unit card. Test unit card, effect, perfect. Now we can save it. And that's all the setup we really have to do. And if we jump back into Unity, I'll show you how, actually, uh, I'll just bring up the card object in the meantime. So one, one problem that I ran into that I don't really know how to solve as of now is that the game object we have a reference to the game object in our card object constructor. If you recall in the very first video where we made the script of the ball object, which is right here, we just have strings, card types, description, and all that stuff that is required to make our card. I would ideally like to attach like the, um, the effects that we just created directly onto this card object, but it doesn't seem that I can do that. And it's because 
scriptable objects require I don't recall what it was, but um like you need if you're adding something to it, it needs to be what was it static? I'm not quite sure. But essentially I couldn't add a script as a reference and to circumvent that I had to create a prefab which had the script attached to it and then I call it from there and that's what this game object is for card effect and I'll, I'll show you once we go into unity so back in unity hopefully I can show this off pretty easily I'm gonna go to my cards test cards and this is where let me just drag it over just give me one second So in the top right, let me just try to expand that. That's as, that's as good as it's going to get. You can see here that for our spell card object that we created, we have our card object script, which is the script that it's deriving from. Uh, we have the card effect, which is spell card effect. And then we have the name, card type, and so on. This is what we just added, the card effect. And because it takes a game object, it only takes a prefab that we've created. So I've actually created the prefab right here. And the only thing that this prefab is, it honestly doesn't even need a transform. I don't know if I could remove that though. I don't think I can for now. And you can see that I've just added the, obviously it's not the spell, it's not the test spell card script that we just wrote, but it's the one that I had before. It's the exact same thing. So you would, I guess, create a new prefab by um, just creating a new game object, create empty and just drag it back over. You just create empty and maybe just rename this one as spell card effect. Or I'll, I'll call some test. Test spell card effect. And then from here, we would just add our script that we just wrote, which is test spell card effect. So right here, just drag and drop it. And after we have created it, we're just going to go back and just save this as a prefab. We can just drag it into our little directory down here. And we're going to see that we have test spell card effect. It's going to remove this from our actual scene. And what we will do now is on our object that we've created, um, I'm just going to replace the one that I had created before with the one that we just created, which is this test spell card effect. I'm not going to do it for the unit just because it's the exact same thing. And it's a bit redundant. So after we've set that up, we now need to call this from Visual Studio. So I'm going to pull Visual Studio once more. And because we added our prefab as dubbed card effect, what we will now need to do is in our other script, which is, I believe it is the player card usage system, which we created in the, I think I believe it was the previous video where our on play, our play card method will call that effect from that script. So card object, which is dubbed CO, is our selected card because we know which card we're letting go when we're playing it. We're gonna get that, get component card display, which is part of that game object, and then dot card info. And card info is the card object, if I recall. Let me just go back to Unity and bring it up. So if we hit play right now, I'm just gonna move that aside and make this a bit bigger. Draw a few cards. And what we will do is, let's say if we open up our hand panel and find the spell card on the right side, you can see that we have card display and card info. Card info is our card object. So this scriptable object, if we highlight it right now, it's all this information right here. And from this card info, we're looking for the card effect, which is, I think you can see my mouse, yeah. It's this one right here, right? That's what we labeled it as. So if we jump back into Visual Studio, so you can see that our card object is the card info attached to the card that we're playing. And from there, card co, which is our card object, dot card effect, that's what we dubbed it as, and you, if you recall, we actually created a prefab for that. So we need to get component and attach to that prefab. Let's jump back into Unity. Attached to that. As you can see here, we've added our script to our prefab that we just wrote. 
it's test spell card effect right here. And now we can jump back into Visual Studio, open it up. You can see here that our CO, which is our card object dot card effect, and that is the reference to our prefab. And then we get the component card effect parent. I do have to switch this because it's my previous one. So we have to switch we have to switch this to card test card effect parent dot on play. And here is the really cool part where if you if we jump back to Unity just for a moment, you can see that we're actually calling the test spell card effect and not the parent, right? But because we can actually because the spell card inherits from the parent, we could just call the parent and it's going to work out for us. So at this point, if we just save this right now and go back to Unity, and if I were to drag the spell card up and drop it, oh, seems to have not worked. I think I, ran, I was running this before, maybe that's why. So let's draw a few, drag it up, drop it, perfect. Then you can see here that we're playing the test spell card effect. And because we haven't set it up for the unit card, it is probably going to crash if I drag and drop it. Yep, it definitely is just because it doesn't have it. So let's actually quickly go over and do the same thing for the unit card. So it's just go to your scene, create empty. Now we're going to call this one test uh, unit card. Oh, it already exists, but I think this one is not our test, but you know what? That's fine. Oh, didn't mean to hit play. We're just going to modify this one. I'm going to remove, we're going to go into the prefab. Uh, we're actually going to disable or just remove this one, remove this component. And we're going to add the one that we just wrote. So card effects, walkthrough, uh, test unit card. Yes, this one. We're just going to add it to that. And then if we save now, because I was using this before, uh, just because we modified the prefab, it should just update. So let's save, uh, delete that. And if we hit play, uh, same thing where we just changed how we're calling it. And instead of calling, I guess my previous one, we're using the new one that we just created. And now because both of them inherit from the test parent method or the, my apologies, the test card effect parent script that we wrote that we inherited from. Now both of them should work without crashing. So at this point, uh, I'm going to bring the console back up. So we just played our spell card. It's working. Uh, let me just remove my camera. You can see the number is increasing. And now if we test our unit card, it's not going to crash. And you can see that it's all working. And that pretty much concludes how you're going to maybe set up the effects for your your cards. I still have that one problem where, uh, if you recall why we started using scriptable objects in the first place, it was to reduce on size. But if we have to make a prefab for everything and then attach it to the game ob or the scriptable object, I don't know how much space that actually saves. I didn't look into it. So if anyone in the who, if anyone is more knowledgeable than me in, I guess, this field, this area, uh, please do mention it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And yeah, um, small updates. So we're done. We're done for, I guess, card effects. So like I said, moving forward, probably going to do more in-depth videos for like the very first one that I did, like more in detail, a bit of code, a bit of like just those nicer edited longer videos. I'll be working on that. Now I'm looking forward to maybe doing three things. Um, I'll let you guys maybe decide which one. If I don't get like a solid response in a few days, I'll just start working on my own things just because I'll be on a trip for like two weeks and I'll just research things on my own time. Uh, the first thing is maybe like scanning objects in real life and then importing them into Unity so, so you can use them in whatever projects you need to. Second one would be probably random level generation like Spelunky where it's sort of just generated when you start playing it. And the third one would be like maybe rhythm games like Rhythm Heaven. Like how do you like get that beat as it's set up beforehand? Can you do it as on the fly? Things like that. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.